right. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to welcome everybody to our Sunday school class here at Marmaduke First Baptist Church. Whether you're joining us uh, here in person or you're joining us through the internet, we are so glad that you're here with us uh, today. Let's begin uh, with prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We just thank you, God, that once again you have blessed us, that you have allowed us to come together uh, in your house, Lord, to, to study your word, uh, to enjoy your presence, Lord, uh, that for you to spend time here with us today. And Heavenly Father, we just ask that you be with our class, uh, that it's your words, that it's, it's, it's an understanding of you. Uh, that we accomplish here today and God again we just ask that you be with us uh, be with all those whether they're they're joining in person or online and just help us uh, as we travel through your word today in Christ's name we pray amen all right so now now Rachel asked the question she said so now we're starting chapter uh, we're in Joshua uh, she said so we're, we're starting chapter 9 that well okay no we're not okay <laughs> we're still we're, there's some good stuff here uh, uh, backing up all right uh, chapter 8 uh, we're still uh, verses 30 through 35. All right, Joshua chapter 8, 30 through 35. As we, I, isn't that the truth? That you're right. I mean, that, it's one thing to go slow; it's another thing just to go backwards. But uh, anyway, we're going to do a little bit, but but uh, hopefully, hopefully that you'll see there's a there's a purpose for it. Uh, but we're still in Joshua chapter 8, 30 through 35. Now we're traveling. Uh, with the children of Israel. Uh, we've crossed the River Jordan. We've set up camp at Gilgal. Uh, we've taken Jericho. We've taken Ai. And then, then uh, for some reason, uh, we took this odd turn uh, to the north uh, when actually, as far as militarily is concerned, what you're going to see is the children of Israel, their, their first campaign uh, is to take the southern end of the promised land. But uh, for some reason, they move north about 25 miles and, and go to a city of Shechem. Uh, now, we, as we talked about last week, the reason they did that was because God told them to. <laughs> That's an awfully good reason, all right? And, and we should learn from that. It's not so much what we, you know, I'm sure they, some of them were thinking, uh, well, why are we going there? That's not where we need to go. We need to be headed south and taking these cities. Uh, but they understood at this time, and Joshua understood, when God tells you to do something, you just do what God tells you to do, and, it's go and he's going to bless it. And that's what's taking place here. Uh, they've, w they've moved north. They've went to Shechem. Uh, they've set up uh, between uh, two mountains there at Shechem, Mount Ebal on one side and Mount Gerizim on the other. Now, last week, we talked about this altar. We read these verses, and we, we looked at and we talked about this altar uh, that Jacob built uh, on the top of Mount uh, Ebal. And what's so cool about it is that, that uh, archaeologists have found uh, a, an altar on the top of Mount Ebal that is very, very likely uh, the, this actual the spot and, and where this uh, altar was that Joshua put uh, on Mount Ebal. And that's just always so neat to me when, you, when, when uh, uh, you know, it seems like humanity is always wanting to disprove what I know to be the facts. And it's always cool when God says, ah, no, let me just show you something here. All right, and uh, that's just cool stuff. So uh, we looked at that last week. So this week we're going to get into the blessings and the cursings, uh, which I think is very important. And we, we don't spend a lot of time talking about the blessings and the cursings. So let's stop and look at it. There's some good stuff here. But let's begin. Let's at Joshua chapter 8, verses 30 through 35, and read that again. All right, and here's what it says. It says, then Joshua built an altar unto the Lord, of God, uh, uh, Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded the children, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones over which no man hath lift up an iron, and they offered thereon burnt offerings unto the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. And he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. Now think about it. He, they sat there, they plastered those stones, and he wrote the entire law on these stones and built this altar out of these stones. They weren't there for just a little while. Right? They were there for a while taking care of all this. This was very important. They had to get it exactly correct. So they were there. Joshua, they plastered these stones, and he wrote the law on these stones and built an altar out of these stones. Verse 33. And all Israel and their elders and officers and their judges stood on this side of the ark and on that side before the priests of the Levites. So we're back down between 
uh, we're in the valley now between Ebal uh, and Gerizim. All right? and, and verse 33, And all of Israel and their elders and officers and their judges stood on this side of the ark and on that side before the priests, the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord as well as the strangers as he that was born among them, half of them over against Mount Gerizim and half of them over against Mount Ebal, as Moses the servant of the Lord had commanded before that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not, before all the congregation of Israel, with the women and the little ones and the strangers that were conversant among them. All right, so they were all there, not just the children of Israel, but all the strangers who had come to be with them. You know, Israel was a very uh, accepting uh, uh, nation. Uh, they wanted people to join them, and here they have strangers there. You know, and I've thought about here, uh, you know, they moved into the, the promised land, and they destroyed uh, Jericho, and they moved on to Ai, and they destroyed Ai. It's just interesting to me that now they've moved to Shechem. I don't know how big Shechem was, but it, I don't know. It doesn't say they destroyed Shechem. I don't know why. It doesn't tell me. I don't know if possibly the people of Shechem uh, may have joined them and said, hey, we want to... We, we want to believe in your God. You know, I don't know. Uh, but it is interesting, but that's where they're at here. Uh, they're, they're at Shechem uh, uh, between Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim, and they're, they are now uh, experiencing and going through the blessings and the cursings. Now, uh, uh, there's not a lot of commentary out there on the blessings and the cursings, but it's interesting. You can go back. Uh, Jewish writers uh, uh, write some about the blessings and the cursings, and I was reading uh, a blog of a, a, a Jewish historian, and she was talking about uh, the blessings and the cursings, and I thought this was interesting. She said, you know, you have to understand that when, when you read the blessings and the cursings, first of all, if you read just what we just read in Joshua, you think, well, okay, there's not a lot here about the, it doesn't tell us a lot about these blessings and cursings. But actually, there are few things in the Old Testament, few events in the Old Testament which uh, the Bible, there is so much content about as the blessings and the cursings. And that's because actually to really get into the blessings and the cursings, you've got to go back into Deuteronomy, which is what we're going to do. Uh, if you have your Bible, you can turn to Deuteronomy chapter 11. But this, this writer, this Jewish writer was talking about, and she was, she was talking about, you know, I've always wondered in, in the Old Testament, in, in Leviticus, you know, God, God takes them across the Red Sea, and they set up camp at Mount Sinai. And at Mount Sinai, God gives them the law. And while they're there, they study the law. And the purpose of that was so that they could become the children of God. They were to be holy. They weren't to be like any other nation. They were to be different. And that's what God's law did. He said, you follow my law, you're going to be holy. You're going to be set apart uh, for me. And so at Mount Sinai, they studied the law. Now, the purpose of it at Mount Sinai, according to this Jewish historian, to be honest, I think, well, that, that makes sense to me, was that what they were doing there was they were becoming the nation of God. Right? They were establishing themselves as the children of God. They crossed the Red Sea. They went to Mount Sinai. They, they learned the law. All right? But then when you get, then you get to Deuteronomy, and you go through it all again. You know, it goes, it's the second law. You go through the law again. I always, well, God, I mean, other than, you know, the, the book of Deuteronomy, uh, which, uh, which we're going to be in today, you know, uh, one of the, uh, for me, and, and, and I'm, unfortunately, one of the most useful things I have found uh, to use the book of Deuteronomy for is if I can't sleep. I can always turn to the book of Deuteronomy and start reading, and pretty quick I'm just going to be out, all right? Uh, and so uh, I, I'm going to test my teaching skills, I guess, here, and let, because guess what? I'm going to teach out of the book of Deuteronomy. Now, that's just silly. All right? I may, I hope, I'm going to be watching and see how many of you I put to sleep here as we go through Deuteronomy. But we're going to be looking uh, at Deuteronomy. because and this, this Jewish historian was saying that the difference in, in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, she said that Leviticus was when God was establishing them as, as the children of God. But what you'll notice in Deuteronomy, and as I, as I look back and I, I'm looking at it from the beginning of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy takes place right at the end of, of Moses' leadership. He's about to die, all right? And Deuteronomy's the last thing he tells them. And what he, what, what he does in Deuteronomy 
you'll see if you read the book is he tells them, okay, I, you're about to go on without me. Here's what you're about to do. You're about to cross into the promised land. You've got to cross the river Jordan, and you, it's time for you to take the promised land. And, and what he's telling them is, if you are to be successful in taking the promised land, here's what you have to do. And what he does, if you will notice, he takes them right back, and he goes through the law again. He says, if you're going to be successful, you've got to go back to the beginning, and you've got to follow uh, the law. Now, she, this, this Jewish historian, she's writing this from the, the standpoint of a, of a Jew, all right? Jesus Christ is not playing into her thought process. But as I'm reading this, it's playing into mine. Because what I'm seeing there is God telling me, all right, so now there are two distinct, important aspects or uh, uh, parts of being a Christian, all right? Of course, the first one is we need to cross that Red Sea. We got, we got the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We need to experience that, and we need to go to Sinai. And at Sinai, that's when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we become, he establishes us. He, he, he makes us, he made me holy when I accepted Jesus Christ. He set me apart from the rest of the world when I accepted Jesus Christ. But now there's another part to my, my, this process that I'm going through of being a Christian. Because now that I am a Christian, now that he's, I've crossed the Red Sea, I've, I've been to Mount Sinai, he has established me as a child of God. Too often, I've said this before, as Christians, we think, well, I'm done. Okay, I, I've done it. I, I, let me set back. Let me, let me just go ahead and face the east, and I'm going to wait for the clouds to part and for, for Jesus Christ to come through and, and get me and take me home. We think we're done. But I think this is a picture that shows us, no, you're not done. You're just getting started. Now, you, you've crossed the Red Sea. You've accepted Jesus Christ. I've set you apart. Now you're holy. Now I need you to move forward. I need you to take the promised land. I have things for you to do. I have work for you to do. I need you to cross over, and I need you to take that promised land. So that, to me, that's what I see here. Uh, in the difference between Leviticus and Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is when he's telling them, this is what you've got to do to cross over and to take the, the promised land. And so Christians, we need to understand what's taking place in Deuteronomy, and that's, that's where we're at here at the, the blessings and the cursings. This is where Joshua, where God is telling them, if you're going to be successful, if you're going to take the promised land, here's what you have to do. Now what you're going to see is he takes them back to the law. And, and because understand that they're, they're in a different, they're Old Testament and we're New Testament, all right? So, so they had to go back to the law. If they were to be successful, they had to follow the law exactly, all right? There was no mercy. You had to follow the law exactly. Now, and what we're going to, as we go through this, what you're going to see is, okay, we're in the New Testament. Now, we're not under the law. We're under grace, and we're under mercy. And what does that mean for us? So, so what's the difference between our blessings and cursings and, and their blessings and cursing? How, how does this work? So bear with me. Deuteronomy chapter 11, uh, verse 26. And what I want to do is start with uh, just here in Deuteronomy, reading some of this that had to do, because much of Deuteronomy deals with these blessings and cursings. Is, is what they're, that's what Moses, and understand, Moses is telling them. You're going to cross over, you're going to go to Mount Ebal, Mount Gerizim, and when you get there, this is what you're going to do, and this is what they did. All right, so Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 26 through 29. says this, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if you will not obey the commands, uh, commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. He's saying, don't do that. Do not go after other gods. Well, later on we're going to find out what do they do if they go after other gods. But anyway, verse 29. And it shall come to pass when the Lord thy God hath brought thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessings upon Mount Gerizim and the curse upon Mount Ebal. This is Moses telling them what to do when they get there. And that's where we're at. That's what's, what's taking place. All right, skip uh, uh, going over to Deuteronomy 27. Now, if we, if you, and I would encourage you, read, start, start at chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 11 and read all the way through this because this is where he's laying out the law. This is what, the, we're, we're skipping some things, all right, because there's a lot of it. 
And basically what God is, is telling them is, if, if you're going to receive my blessings, here is the law, and here is what you have to do perfectly. And if you do these things perfectly, you're going to receive the blessing. If you don't, you're going to receive the cursing. Now, we understand that the purpose for all of that was to show them you can't do it. But basically what he's doing here is saying, if you want my blessings, here is my standard. If you meet my standard, you're going to receive the blessings. Now, were Israel able to meet that standard? No, they weren't. I wouldn't either. I mean, it, it's very specific. It's very tough. All right? But what he's showing them and showing us is, if you think you're good enough to meet the standard of God, you are sadly mistaken. What you need is some grace. What I need is some mercy. All right? That's what i got to have because I can't do it any more than they did. But let's skip forward. Deuteronomy chapter 27. Now, again, this is Moses speaking here uh, and he gives this is where he's giving them the instructions uh, and Moses with the elders of Israel commanded the people saying keep all the commandments which I command you this day keep them all and that shall it shall be on the day when ye shall pass over Jordan unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee that thou shalt set thee up a great set thee up great stones and plaster them with plaster and thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law when thou art passed over, and thou, that thou mayest go into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, a land that floweth with milk and honey, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee. Therefore it shall be when ye be gone over Jordan, that ye shall set up these stones which I command you on this day in Mount Ebal, and thou shalt plaster them with plaster. And there shalt thou build an altar unto the Lord thy God, an altar of stones. Thou shalt not lift up any iron tool upon them. Thou shalt build the altar of the Lord thy God of whole stones, and thou shalt offer burnt offerings thereon unto the Lord thy God. And thou shalt offer peace offerings, and shalt eat there, and rejoice before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. And Moses and the priests and the Levites spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed that heart and hearken, O Israel, this day that thou art become the people of the, God, of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. And Moses charged the people the same day saying, These shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people when ye are come over Jordan, Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar and Joseph and Benjamin. Not, we're talking about those tribes. All of that, that group is to go to Mount Gerizim and stand on Mount Gerizim. And these shall stand upon Mount Ebal to curse Reuben, Gad, and Asher, and Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. Now, why did he divide it up this way? Well, it doesn't really tell us. It is interesting, though, that they've looked at the numbers, uh, how many people were in each of these families, each of these tribes, and they say that as far as getting an even number on Mount Ebal and an even number on Mount Gerizim, this is as close as you could come that basically he divided up so you had the same number of people on each mountain, all right? So, so that's why it's not that, you know, one family, you know, these families are saying they're blessed and these are cursed. That's not what he's saying. He's just saying uh, we're going to put all of you on these two mountains and we're going to go through the, the blessings and the cursings for all of you. Verse 14, And the Levites shall speak and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice. And now, so here he gets into some cursings, all right? Uh, Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image, and uh, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the, the hands of the craftsmen, and putteth it in a secret place, and all the people shall answer and say, Amen. So the Levites say this, and then all the people say, Amen. We're with you. We okay, we're with, we agree with you there. Verse 16, Cursed be he that setteth light by his father or his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that uh, perverteth the judgment of the stranger, fatherless, and widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Now, I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to read all of them, but it's interesting to read them. And actually, there's a lot more all right, that we'll talk about. There's a, whole, there's a whole lot. It's interesting. There's a lot more curses then there are blessings, all right, uh, for good reason, uh, because they're, uh, they're human, all right. Unfortunately, what God said is uh, you're not going to follow the blessings, you're going to follow the cursings because you're sinful, just like we are, all right. But it's interesting as you go through these curses and read what all he's telling them, if you do these things, you will be cursed, all right. Now, go to Deuteronomy 28. 
Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 9. If we're going to talk about the curses, hey, let's at least stop and talk about the blessings a little bit. I, I enjoy talking about the blessings more than I do the cursing. So, so let's talk about the blessings a little bit. Deuteronomy 28, start at verse 1. It says, And it shall come to pass, uh, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall, be thou, uh, shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall uh, thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten uh, before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in, in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself, and he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Those are the blessings. Now, it's interesting, if you get time, that was, that's in, uh, what, chapter 28. That's just the beginning of chapter 28. Then he switches to the cursings, and, and they go on for a while, all right? So, inter so he's, he's giving them here the blessings and the cursings. And he's saying, if you are going to take this promised land, here's what you have to do. You have to follow my law exactly, and if you do, you will receive the blessings. If you do not follow them exactly, you will receive the cursings. All right? Now, here's the thing. We have to understand the same is true for us, or the same would be true for us today if it weren't for one man. That's Jesus Christ. The blessings and the cursings that were upon them and the law that they had to follow is not upon me. I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. Whew, let me just say that. I'm glad I'm not under the law. I'm glad I'm under grace. So let's look a little bit about what does the New Testament say to us about these blessings and cursings. Go to Galatians chapter 3, and we'll start again at verse 1. Galatians chapter 3. Here Paul is explaining to the Galatians some things because the Galatians uh, are having some difficulty. The Galatians have, have uh, turned to Christ. They have accepted Christ as their Savior. But the problem is what they're doing, what so many of these people did, and what Paul spent a lot of time working with these people who had accepted Jesus Christ, is telling them, don't go back to the law. We're not under the law anymore. We're under grace. And that's what he's doing here. Uh, but he's going to talk about these blessings and these cursings as we as we read through it all right so uh, Galatians chapter 3 uh, start at verse 1 we're going to go through uh, verse 14 and here's what it says O foolish Galatians who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you this only would I learn of you received ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of, of, of faith. He's, he's asking, how did, uh, uh, how did you receive the Spirit? Did you re receive the Spirit by your works, by following the law? Is that how you received the Spirit? Or did you receive the Spirit by the hearing of faith? Of course, the answer is by the hearing of faith. All right, They're not under the law anymore. Verse 3, he says, Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? He's asking, so, so have you accomplished it? Have you accomplished what in the Old Testament our forefathers could not? Have you become perfect in the flesh? You must have. Because if you want to go back to law, that must be what you're saying. You must be saying that you think you can accomplish what they could never accomplish. And he's saying, uh, are you that foolish to believe that, that you can do that? Verse 4, have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. He's just telling which, which one is it. Now, 
went to, see, he's saying, the, the person you have accepted, this Jesus Christ who hung on the cross, how, uh, 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 and worketh all this mirror, do, doeth he uh, by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? And, of course, they do it by the hearing of faith in what Jesus Christ had done. Verse 6. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, I'm a heathen, guess what, we're heathens, all right? I mean, we just are. I'm a, I'm a proud heathen, all right? I, people, you know, uh, uh, my father-in-law used to say, uh, you know, if they ask him, well, are you, know, are you of English descent or, you know, uh, you know, or German? Or, he said, I don't know. He, he said, I'm just a mutt is all I know. I, I, I'm just an old mutt. I'm just a heathen, all right? And that's who he's talking about. Uh, here in verse 8 when he says, And the scripture foreseeth that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be, what? Blessed. All nations shall be blessed through this man, Jesus Christ, who you have put your faith in. Verse 9. So then they which by the faith are blessed with, with faithful Abraham. I am blessed with Abraham. How was Abraham blessed? He was blessed because he had faith, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Well, guess what? I've got faith. I've got faith in Jesus Christ, and it has been counted to me as righteousness. And because of that, I am blessed. I'm one of these people here when he's talking about that I'm going to receive the blessings and not the curses. Verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Cursed is the one who doesn't do every single one of them. Verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that he might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So right here in Galatians, he's taking them back and he's saying, or do you want to go back and live under those blessings and the cursings that God laid out for them? Is that what you want to do? Really? You think you can accomplish that? He's saying, no, you, we, we are under faith, faith in Jesus Christ. We are blessed just through, not through our works, uh, not because we follow all the law, but because we have faith in Jesus Christ. So here as Christians today, we need to understand that as we move forward through this promised land that we're in, what we need to do, it's not, um, it, it's not so much that we, have, that we have to live, well, we don't. We don't live by the law. We live by faith. We live by grace because the law showed us, the law showed me, and it should show all of us, that there's only two ways to heaven. And one is to follow the law, to never sin against the law. Well, I'm done already. All right, I'm out and I'm just tell you, you are too, all right? If you could live a perfect life uh, and never sin, then you would be in a position to go before a holy God. But you're not, and I'm not either. There was only one person who accomplished that, and we hung him on a tree. All right, so so that we can't get there that way, and that's what the Old Testament showed us here, and what they're showing us with the blessing and the cursing. We have to do it by faith. We have to have faith in Jesus Christ. My righteousness is through him because of his blood. You know, this morning we celebrated uh, uh, the, the Jesus on the cross and his, him, him, uh, his giving us his body and his blood through communion. Uh, and what a blessing that is. And that's what that shows us, that I'm not under the blessings and the cursings here anymore. I'm under the grace of Jesus Christ. Now, what, it, it's interesting to me. You know, here lately, uh, uh, as I studied this in Joshua and went back to the Old Testament and, and listening to Kim preach, that a lot of what he, you know, what he's preaching, I'm thinking, yeah, I, I, I see that here. You know, here lately, he's in Hebrews, uh, the warnings. Now, that is not to say that as, as, as Christians today that we can just go out here and live however we want to live. That, hey, I'm not under the blessings and the cursings. I'm not under the law. I'm under faith, so therefore I can just go out and live any way I want to. Absolutely not. The New Testament is very clear. And in Hebrews, where Kim has had us for a few Sundays, in showing us these warnings that basically we're, we're not under the cursings, 
but that's not to say that there's not consequences all right when we make bad decisions we're going to suffer the consequences for those all right now I'm, I'm going to suffer the now let me be clear I'm going to suffer the consequences of my bad decisions I'm going to cut, suffer the consequences of my sins while I'm here on earth all right as I'm going through this thing he's going to allow me to suffer those consequences but he makes it clear to me that my that when I die or when he comes and gets me uh, that it's it's not it's not based on that I followed the law, that I didn't sin. It's based on my faith in Jesus Christ and his righteousness, that his blood, that, he, that his, his body was broken for me, and that his blood uh, was poured out, that, that, that one drop of that precious blood uh, applied to my sins covers all of my sins. So here today, uh, we're going to stop there, and we've looked at the blessings and the cursings. Uh, that occurred here and, and and I hope that as we move forward this is one of those things that will stick with us you know that from now on when you hear of evil and you hear of Gerizim hey that's where the blessings and the cursings were uh, that God gave to them there at Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim now next I, I'll tell you this next Sunday what I want to do is spend a little time looking at uh, some some is some history because in this area of Shechem there, it's interesting when you go back and see in this, this place that they are, they're at Shechem, which is between Ebal and Gerizim, how much took place at this spot. This is a sacred place for the Jews, this spot called Shechem, because so much took, uh, not only going back into the Old Testament, but going forward into the New Testament, there were some things that took place here. And so I want to spend a little bit of time next week. We're going to look at uh, the history of this place. Uh, and Rachel, I promise, we're, we're going to, one of these days, we're going to get to chapter 9. All right, it's out there. We're going to get there. Uh, but uh, we're going to spend a little more time looking at this place because, you know, this is one of those things that, like I said, uh, you know, so much of, of what I know of the Old Testament, I, I learned as a child. You know, but but it's interesting the, the blessings and the cursings and evil and maybe you heard a lot about I really didn't so this is all new to me it's pretty cool stuff because there's some very important stuff that took place here and we need to understand it and God not only that God says this is a sacred place this this place called Shechem there's some some important things that took place and again remember you, you know you may be saying well what about Jerusalem Jerusalem is well they haven't uh, Jerusalem became the sacred place through David and through his, David's not on the scene yet right? this is early Israel this is as they're going through Gilgal and Shechem and Shiloh that's what's taking place here so we're going to take a look at a little bit of that uh, it's just pretty good stuff uh, so I, um, I hope you're enjoying it uh, I appreciate I didn't I didn't see not one person fall asleep today we made it through Deuteronomy and I don't think anybody fell asleep so I appreciate that uh, so much let's have prayer and we'll be dismissed Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, and again, again God, we just thank you that uh, you have blessed us today, God, that you have blessed us and allowed us to come together and study your word. And God, I just, I just thank you so much that your Holy Spirit lives in those words, and your Holy Spirit jumps off of those, those, uh, those pages into our hearts and our minds, and I just thank you that you, you provide that for us, God. God, we know uh, that uh, we, we're living in difficult times. I know there's lots of folks out there who have lost loved ones, this covid uh, mess that we're having to deal with and God I just pray that you will wrap your arms around your people uh, that you will give them peace and that you will allow them to take their eyes off of this world and the things that are going on in this world and that Lord you will allow us to put our eyes on you because God I know if we do that oh we will be blessed we will uh, we'll be filled with joy and so God please help us to keep our eyes on you and not the world around us uh, just take us home and bring us back uh, next week uh, safely in Christ's name we pray amen all right thanks everybody I'll see you next week